Hello everyone and welcome back to Let's Play Pokemon Fire Red. Yo, champ in the making. Let me give you some advice. The leader Misty is a pro who uses water type Pokemon. You can drain all the water with grass type Pokemon. Or you might use electric types and zap them. Thanks guy who I can't remember the name of. In the last part, we went to North of Cerulean City going and visiting Bill in the process and now it's time for us to head through Cerulean Gym, which as our little helper just mentioned is entirely water typed. And it starts off with Horsey. Water types are easily the most prevalent Pokemon type in the series, and because of that, there's a lot of them worth using. The Horsey line itself, from my memory, is not. If I'm recalling correctly, it's oddly defensive and special attack oriented. Uh, the pure uh, water type makes it only grass and electric weaknesses. But its evolution into what we eventually see as Seedra just isn't too useful. It wasn't until Gen 2, where its third evolution came about, that it became really good. Uh, from my memory, at least. On the opposite scale, that sort of is Shelder, who is extraordinarily defensive. This thing has a really high attack stat, and I think its evolution only uh, extends that. I swear I remember this thing being part Ice-type, but I th think I'm also thinking of the evolution when it comes to that. We can't catch either of these Pokemon until way later in the game, but when they're there, they're okay water-type Pokemon. I don't think you can evolve Horsey into the second evolution until post-game, because I think they lock anything from Johto and beyond into that sector of the game. But it's nice, it's there. Because I do know, uh, <laughs> this takes me back a bit, when you bought these games new, uh, they came with a little, in the box, a little pocket guide that wasn't exactly a walkthrough, but more of a mechanics walkthrough. Showing you type coverages, certain Pokemon evolve under certain circumstances, some maps, I think, of the region in general. Fairly basic stuff. It was a really cool guide, though, and I, I always liked looking at it when I was trying to fall asleep. But, uh, I do know for a fact they had a picture of, I think, Golbat attempting to evolve into Crobat there. Either way, this is Goldeen, one of the anime's favorite water-type Pokémon, and I can't exactly tell why, because it's not too spectacular. Uh, pure water-type, so gra Grass and Electric are the only weaknesses. I think its highest stat might be Attack from my memory? I don't even think its evolution is that good from my memory, so it's just not a line that's worth using unless it's one of your favorites. Mind you, this is just how I tend to look at Pokémon. It's either a Pokémon I already liked beforehand, that fill in my type coverage chart that I like to try and get in every game. Or ones that I know are good. There are very few Pokemon where I just go, Ooh, I like this one. I'm going to put it on my team. The only cases where that happens is either the first time I'm playing a new game in the series. Or uh, my favorite Pokemon. Because I always try to have my favorite with me. Just because I love it so much. Either way, Anthem reached level 16 there, which is notable because that means it's going to be able to evolve. Now, a notable thing about Abra, it doesn't learn any more moves from leveling up beyond the teleport it starts with. So if you even want to start giving it attack moves beyond using TMs, most of which we can't have it use at this point because its move loader set is weird, we have to have it evolve into Kadabra right now. Because if it evolves at 17, because you canceled the first time, it will not learn Confusion, because Kadabra only learns that at level 16. With that said, I now go and grind. Why? I want to have everyone up to 20 for the gym leader herself. Because, less so for her first Pokemon, her second Pokemon is an annoying piece of shit if you're playing as Charmander. Hi, you're a new face. Only those trainers who have a policy about Pokemon can turn pro. What is your approach when you tra catch and train Pokemon? My policy is an all-out offensive with Water-type Pokemon. Alright, Gym Leader Misty. Her first Pokemon she's going to throw out is Staryu. Plain Water-type, straightforward there. Highest stat is, I think, Special Attack. If you can find one of these, it's okay. However, her particular uh, Staryu has Tackle, Harden, Recovery, and Water Pulse, as well as the ability Natural Cure. I haven't really gone into abilities much at this point. Uh, the notable ones I have at my team at the moment. Uh, Anthem has Synchronize, which any status ailments afflicted on him will be afflicted to the opponent. Uh, Blaze has Blaze, which will increase the power of Fire-type moves when it's low on HP, I believe. Kenny has Static, which if a move touches him physically, there's a chance it'll inflict Paralysis. But Staryu and her next Pokémon, Star Me, have Natural Cure, which in the case she switches out for some reason, 
uh, assassin elements will be cured. The Starmie here is the reason I grind it. Rapid Spin, Swift, Recover, and Water Pulse. Water Pulse is an extraordinarily powerful water type move for this point in the game that can also inflict confusion. Recover recovers its HP. Swift is a 100% accuracy move that's relatively low on power, but can still hurt. And Rapid Spin is actually probably the, the odd one out there, because while it has special effects, they're not ones you'd usually see at this point in the game. Because, uh, like, it can affect uh, freedom from binding moves in the case, like, if a Bell Sprout and you use Bell Sprout? Bell Sprouts, and you use, like, Bind on it, or Leech Seed for that matter. It's mostly there if you have a Bulbasaur, I guess. The annoying thing about this fight is my strategy for it kind of requires me to have Anthem for this. In particular, a move it learned around level 18, I think, Confuse, uh, Disable, which disables the last move the opponent used for about three to five turns, I think. My goal here is to disable either Water Pulse or Recover because both of those are extraordinarily annoying. Recover, preferably, because while I can deal with the damage, having to do it over and over again is just annoying. I'll be real with you. I had to attempt this fight off screen for practice and recording about 14 times. Because when you choose Charmander, and especially if you catch more than one Pokemon on the way here, your levels are not going to be ready for a level 21 Starmie, much if at all. This is what I meant earlier by Charmander really kind of having a rough early game, because you go right from a rock type gym to a water type gym, which is just a bad combination. Wow, you're too much! All right, you can have the Cascade Bash you to show you beat me. All righty, two down, six to go. The Cascade Bash makes all Pokemon up to level 30 obey. That even includes outsiders you got in trades. There's more, you can now use Cut anytime, even out of battle. You can cut down small trees to open new pathways. You can also have my favorite TM. And we got TM03, which is Water Pulse. TM03 teaches Water Pulse, using it on aquatic Pokemon. It's a powerful enough move, and I might use it later on on my Water type. But I actually haven't decided that yet, even though I actually already had the Water uh, type in the point I'm recording I'm at at the moment. With that, our business in Cerulean City is more or less done. And this cop here was actually blocking this door, but the moment you finish your business with Bill up in the north, you can come back and he's out of the way, because the people here were robbed. And Team Rocket apparently is behind it because even the police force has trouble with them. Kind of a shoddy police force if you're having trouble with Team Rocket, but oh well. Those miserable rockets. Look what they've done to my house. They stole TM for teaching and Pokemon how to dig holes. I was going to use it on a Mankey or a That cost me a bundle, it did. It's a good thing Team Rocket's dumb because they're right here. Hey, stay out. It's not your yard. Huh? Me? I'm an innocent bystander. Don't you believe me? All right, now this Team Rocket Grunt only has two Pokemon. Starting off, it has a Machop, and then it leads right in with a new Pokemon. This is Drowsy. Drowsy is pure psychic, which means it's weak to Bug, Ghost, and Dark, and it's kind of the counter to Kadabra. While the Abra line is very special attack oriented, the Drowsy line is very special defense. So if you're more of a defensive player, this could be a good choice for a psychic type, uh, especially here in Fire Red and Leaf Green. In the original Gen 1, you more or less only had these two choices, uh, barring subtypes. Uh, I'd overall say the Abra line is worth it, though, because first off, it has a second evolution. That while you guess you can only get through training, it's still relatively powerful enough. Okay, I'll return the TM I stole. And we got TM28. I better get moving. Bye. TM28 contains Dig. I figure what's lost is lost. I decided to teach Diglett how to dig without a TM. Dig is a ground type move where your mo Pokemon digs under the ground for a turn where in case they're attacked then you're completely immune and then they sprout up and do a pretty decent chunk of damage. Honestly, I could teach that to Zoe and have a pretty easy time during the next gym battle, but I just don't care to. Either way, welcome to Route 5. Uh, Pokemon found here are Pidgeys, Oddishes, Bellsprouts, and the... I think only found here on the next route, Meowths, which are normal type cat Pokemon. And this is the daycare. You can leave a Pokemon here, and the longer you stay away by walking, the more experience points that Pokemon gains. I'm leaving Brit here so that when I come back here and God knows when, I'll have... it probably be ready for evolution. Also, this guard's thirsty and the road's closed, and because of that, we can't progress onwards. Terrible guards. So we need to go and take the underground path, which branches Cerulean City and Vermilion. Also, this girl here has a trade for a Nidoran uh, female, if you have the male. 
If I'm recalling correctly, those aren't version exclusive, so there's not much reason to? Uh, wait, actually, are they? I completely forget. Now, here's the thing. The underground path here is one long hallway. And there are items hidden in here, but I don't think they spawn until you talk to the lady at the opposite end of this one. In particular, there is an antidote, a paralyzed heal, an awakening, a potion, an ice heal, and a burn heal hidden somewhere that I just don't care to look for. If you find them, cool, but I, don't, I just don't care to. So yeah, if there is a point where they spawn, it's either talking to her here, or when we eventually have to go back through it on our way back uh, north uh, later on. With that, welcome to Route 6, a place that is more or less the same as Route 5. I think even the Pokemon obtainable here are the exact same, barring those we can encounter in water, because we will eventually be able to go on water, and that has an entirely different set of Pokemon we can encounter. But I just don't care to show that off at the moment, because first off, I can't. I just straight up can't. Uh, as for the trainers here, the, 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 the bug catcher, I think, has a bunch of Weedles. That camper had just a Squirtle. The picnicker, I think, had a Rattata and Pikachu, whereas this bug catcher has a new Pokemon for us to encounter. This is Butterfree. This is the final evolution of the Caterpie line. This is arguably the best bug type Pokemon in Gen 1. Fairly t uh, balanced special stats. Uh, bug flying type, which means it's weak to flying, rock, fire, ice, and electric, I believe, from the top of my head. And it is oddly psychic based in its moveset. It's gonna learn confusion very early on, and then it learns Psybeam not even far after its evolution. If you want a pretty decent bug Pokemon for the first third of the game or so, I recommend catching a Caterpie and going after this thing, because it is very useful. L less so now than it used to be back in the original Gen 1, where the special stat was one thing that combined both attack and defense, essentially. But nowadays, it's it's still useful. I think it's a, I also just really love its design, even though I can't think about it without thinking of that one episode of the anime that shall remain nameless. Though I don't like this one because it has supersonic, and that causes confusion. I actually don't think I've talked about confusion yet. Confusion... It sucks. Whenever you're inflicted with it, or you inflict something with it, there's a chance that it will not use the move it selected, but it will instead hit itself for a uh, percent of its HP. The chances of it hitting itself depend on the game, I think. Until Gen 7, it was a 50% chance, but from 7 onwards, it was 1 in 3. But it sucks, and what hurts so much about it is that it's a non-standard status ailment, which means... You can have a different status ailment like poisoning, paralysis, so on and so forth, and still be confused, leading to a combination that most people like called parafusion, where you're paralyzed, meaning you have about a one in two shot of moving, and then you have a one in two shot of actually hitting yourself. Which sucks. Unless you're using it, in which case it is greatly satisfying. I actually had some potential takes uh, against Misty Starmie where I got parafusion on it, but it just said no and managed to hit me or snap out of its confusion too early. I hate that Starmie. I hate that Starmie so much. Now, this particular camper has a new Pokemon. This is Raticate, the evolution of Rattata. It's okay, it's a fast Pokemon, I believe. Uh, one of the faster ones from the original Gen 1. But its attack stats, from my memory, aren't too spectacular. I think it's a... Uh, Physical attack is the higher of the two, for that matter. Where it specializes is its Hyper Fang attack, but ultimately it's not very memorable. It's normal type, which means it's only weak to fighting. It's a good early game Pokemon, I think is the best way to put it. In case you're one of those people that likes to catch every new Pokemon they see. If you want to use that for like, up until arguably the next, after the next gym, it's not a bad choice. There are better choices, in my eyes at least, but it's not a bad one. But with that, Aqua reached level 20, which means she's no longer going to be useless, like her namesake. Magikarp evolves into a very interesting Pokemon. This is Gyarados. Water flying type. And it already learns a better move just by evolving at this level. It's going to learn Bite, which is a dark type move that when used has a chance, I think like around 10%, of making the target flinch. Meaning their move is wasted. Oh, actually, before I go on that point. The urge to battle with someone you've tangled with before. Have you ever had that urge? I'm sure you have. 
I wanted to battle certain people again over and over too, so I've been giving these away. Please take one. Here we get the Versus Seeker. What this allows you to do is that if you use it whenever there's trainers you've already fought on screen, if it's one from a certain list of trainers, an exclamation point will appear above them, and you can talk to them to duel them again, only they'll have higher level Pokemon. It's essentially a way that you can grind trainer battles without having to grind standard Pokemon battles over and over and over again, because trainer battles do give more EXP. Either way, as I was saying, Gyarados is awesome because its attack stat is enormously high, as is its special defense, I believe? It's a very good Pokemon, uh, especially if you can manage to buy that one early on and just have it turtle EXP until it eventually evolves. It's arguably one of the better Water-type Pokemon you can get. Despite its flying subtype, it can't learn too many flying-type moves, and also means it's four times weak to Electric-type, but it's overall completely worth your time. With that said, it's not going to be in my team the entire game. I have a better Water-type in mind for my own preferences. Also, from that Fishing Guru there, we got the Older Rod. This allows us to start fishing. Sort of. The way fishing works is whenever you throw the fishing rod by using it from the Keanu's menu, you'll go dot, 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 and there's a chance during one of these dots you'll catch a Pokemon and fight it. The problem is, in Gen 1 and its remake here in Gen 3, the old rod can only ever catch Magikarp. In fact, it usually can only catch Magikarp. Uh, later, in later games, there's a chance it can catch different ones, but Magikarp is usually still the most likely because, god, it's useless. We won't be able to actually catch legitimately good Pokemon with the rods until we get its two subsequent rods, the good and super one. We'll see those sometime past part 10, probably. Also, I'm coming into this house in particular to talk to this little girl. Hi, do you have a Spearow? Want to train for my Farfetch'd? I can't because I don't have a Spearow. Yet. I actually want to keep that girl in mind for later. For now, welcome to the Pokemon fan club. Why don't you admire my Pikachu's adorable tail? Our chairman is very vocal about Pokemon. Our chair of the Pokemon fan club, I've raised more than a hundred. I'm very fussy when it comes to them, I surely am. So, did you come to hear about my Pokemon? Good, then listen up. My favorite Rapidash. It's cute, lovely, smart, plus amazing, you think so? Oh yes, it's stunning, kindly love it. I'll get to when sleeping warm and cuddly, spectacular, ravishing. Oops, look at the time, I kept you too long. Thanks for hearing me out, you can have this. And we get the bike voucher, we'll use that later. Take that bike voucher to the bike shop from Cerulean City. Exchange that for a bicycle free of charge. Don't worry, my favorite Fero will fly me anywhere I need to go. So I have no need for a bicycle. I hope you like cycling. Oh dear, my seal is far more attractive, by double I would say. That does remind me though, uh, the bag system was changed for, I believe, Gen 3 onward. No, actually Gen 2 onwards. In Gen 1, you just had a small inventory of about, I want to say, 30 items that you could keep. Starting from Gen 2, each bag had pockets that could hold up to, I think, at least 99 of an item. And while it's still technically limited, there isn't a high amount you can carry. It, you're seldom going to ever reach that max amount. And welcome to Route 11, one of my favorite routes in the game because there's a lot of Pokemon here that you can use to grind up, as well as the trainers. As for the route itself, you can run into Spearow, Ekans, Santrus, and Drowsy. Ekans is Fire Red exclusive, whereas Sandshrew is Leaf Green, I believe. So this is a case again where I think Leaf Green technically gets the better Pokemon because I actually don't like the Ekans playing town too much, whereas I love Sandshrew and its evolution, Sand Slash. But now it's time for us to fight Gamer Darien, who has a new po two new Pokemon for us, actually. Starting off with Growlithe, pure fire type. Uh, I think its highest attack is a... an attack? I think it's actually just a very attack-based Pokemon. Fire type, which means it's great to ground, rock, and water. I don't have any ground, rock, or water moves, though, so I'm just going to have Aqua bite it to death. His next Pokemon is sort of the other fire type for the game, Vulpix. Again, pure fire types are the same weaknesses, and I think its highest attack is between its special attack, or its uh, defense, rather, or its speed. The thing is, depending on the version of the game you're playing, you can find one of these later on. If you're looking for a fire type, because either you just don't like the Charmander line too much, or you chose one of the other starters, they're arguably the best one you can find in the game uh, for that respective version. The Growlithe line is, I think, better for my tastes, because I like being very attack-based, but Vulpix and its evolution are still good. In fact, I even think Vulpix has the better design, because I like foxes more than dogs, and I'm more of a cat person anyway, so I, it's the closest thing I can get. We didn't get a fired cat until Gen 7, so yeah. 
The gamer type, by the way, tends to use, I believe, fire types, and I think a couple of ground types later on, if I'm recalling? Ultimately, the archetypes of trainers don't matter too much. I just look at them as set increased distance Poke uh, experience Pokemon battles. And we can head further east of Vermilion here and come up here to find an old friend waiting for us. I'm looking for the Pokemon Nidorino. Want to train with my Nidorina? Nah. Actually, I think that means the Nidorin Nidoran might be version exclusive depending on which one you're playing. I actually can't recall from the top of my head. Ah, remember me? I'm one of Professor Oak's aides. If your Pokedex has complete data on 30 species, I'm supposed to give you a reward. Professor Oak can trust me with the item finder for you. So, Kyle, let me ask you. Have you gathered data on at least 30? Hell no. I don't even think I have much more than 10. Yeah, I don't even have 10. Damn. <laughs> uh, the item finder is a key item that when you use it, if there's a hidden item on the screen somewhere, it'll point you in the direction depending on where you are to it. Uh, the closer you get until you're right on top of it, it just beeps. We can't head further east though because this Pokemon is sprawled out sleeping, out sleeping on the road. God damn it, get out of my way. But no, we're, we're railroaded here. Uh, we need to head back to Vermilion and actually do some stuff there. Which is why I find it curious that people say Pokemon from like Gen 5 onwards railroaded you. No, it basically just got rid of the railroading that was arbitrary in the first place. There isn't many times prior to Gen 5 where you can truly go out of your way to go to a place you're not supposed to be at yet. In fact, I think Gen 1 might be the only time from memory. Maybe Gen 2. Either way, this is Magneton, the evolution of Magnemite. Immune to poison, but weak to fighting ground and fire, especially ground, because it's four times weak due to its electric steel subtyping. If you can find a Magnemite later on, it's not a bad electric type to have for the game, though. Because its special attack stat is really high. However, I prefer the Pikachu line for two reasons. One, mascot Pokemon. Two, I, well, it's, I don't think its stats are as comparable. The move set for Pikachu is just better for my playstyle. Also, in this Pokemon battle, I decided to catch a spirit of trait to that girl for a fart fetched for a couple reasons we'll get into later on. For now, let's just go and fight this youngster who I don't remember what they have. Oh, but they have a new one. This is Nidorino, the evolution of Nidoran male, which I believe is also the first Pokemon this trainer had. Nidorino is, I believe, still the more attack-oriented version of this line. I think the Nidoran female line is generally more defense-oriented. It's not the best, even its poison point ability, which I think is the only one I can have here in Gen 3, isn't the best. It just has a chance of poisoning you if you use a physical-type uh, move. But I'd say, ultimately, the Nidoran lines in general are worth using as long as you have a Moonstone to get the third evolution, uh, the second evolution. Third form, technically, yeah, either way. This gamer also has a new, uh, Pokemon. My brain blanked on the word there for a second, even though it's on my screen right now as the file name. This is Poliwag, pure water type, grass and electric weaknesses only. This thing is fast. That is basically the only standout stat it has here in its base form. As you evolve it along the line it had in Gen 1, it gets better, especially once you expose it to a Water Stone uh, at its second phase. But ultimately, it's a good Water line. The problem is with a lot of these Water Pokemon we're seeing this part, be it Shelter, Horsey, or Poliwag, you can't get it until much later in the game because you need some of the later Rods. And then that was the only new Pokemon that had. But I am going to trade that Spearow I caught to this girl for her Farfetch'd for two reasons. One, I still need a bit more Pokedex progress in order to get everything done in the game I want to do. Because ultimately, I at least want to get, I want to say, 20 to 30? I forget the exact amount. And I also need a Pokemon to use a certain uh, move ability on next part to get into the gym. And this Farfetch'd is my best bet. Because it's right there, it's technically free, why on earth not? But with that, I'm gonna actually show you how to finally use Bill's PC. We can just go on in and we can withdraw our deposit Pokemon. I am going to deposit the Farfetch'd for right now. I'll get it out again early next part. And now I'm gonna withdraw nothing. You can just take any Pokemon you want in and out of the boxes, free of whale, free of rain. Uh, they don't gain experience points while they're in there. 
but it's useful just for party organization, really. And as well as, you know, completing your Pokedex. With that, let's take the only route we haven't out of Vermilion yet. Let's head south here to the pier. Welcome to the SSN. Welcome to the SSN. Excuse me, do you have a ticket? Yeah. Great, welcome to the SSN. With that, I'm going to end this off here. Thank you guys for watching, and in part 7, now that we're accessing the SSN thanks to that ticket Bill gave us, let's go take a look on this luxury cruise ship. See you guys then.